Mathematics crossing your eyes? Maybe Pocket Ronnie can help you. Okay, we're going to be doing imaginary numbers. What you have seen so far is square root of 49. There is no negative under the radical when you, so far, what you have learned. So square root of 49 with no negative. Now you're going to be seeing, if you look at 7c2, you're going to see a, a negative under the radical. Do not get this confused with a negative outside the radical. A negative under the radical implies an imaginary number. In your math career so far, we have dealt with real numbers. Okay, we've dealt real numbers. Okay, now we're dealing with imaginary numbers. And yes, there is a real world application for these. I know that they are used in um, the like electrical engineering um, area. So, so whenever you see a negative under the radical, it gets taken out as an I for imaginary. And you use like a kind of like a little cursive I because if you just do a print I and your dot is not on there correctly, it could get mistaken for a one. So it's a little I with a tail on it. By definition, square root of negative one, if you pull the negative out of the radical as an I and then you have the square root of one is just one. So the square root of negative one is one I, or we just say I, okay? So the square root of negative one is I, and then if I was to take that equation, square root of negative one equals I, and then square both sides, the square root of negative one squared, those, that radical cancels with the exponent, and you're just left with negative one equals I squared. This and the fact that square root of negative 1 equals i are two important facts to know for this lesson, okay? So, looking at 7c2, square root of negative 169. You can think of this as square root of negative 1 times square root of 169. So basically, the square root of negative 1 is i by definition, and the square root of 169 is 13. But instead of writing i13, we write it as 13i. Numbers first and then letters, okay? Basically, what's happening is I'm pulling out the negative from under the radical as an imaginary number, and then I'm taking the square root of this number, and that's how you get your answers. Numbers first and then letters. Look at 7c3. The negative under the radical comes out as an imaginary number. So I know I'm going to have an i, then I take the square root of 64, 8, and then I take the square root of x squared, x. Numbers, letters, then imaginary numbers. Okay, that's the order that you put everything in. Okay, look at 7c4. The square root of a negative 16 over 25. When you have the square root of a fraction, you take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of negative 16 over the square root of 25. Okay? So you can see my numerator will be an imaginary number, but my denominator will not be. Okay? So take out the negative under the radical as an imaginary number and then take the square root of 16, which is 4. The square root of 25 is just a positive 5. There's no negative under the radical, so it's not an imaginary number. So this can be 4i over 5, or it can also be written as 4 fifths i. Either way, it's the same thing. Okay, now we're going to be adding um, imaginary numbers and real numbers. So these are being added and subtracted. So you see that I have a negative under the radical. A negative under the radical implies an imaginary number. Do not get this negative confused with this negative. This negative out here just means a number below zero. This negative says imaginary number. Okay. So square root of negative one, you still have your 13. Take out the negative as an i, and then the square root of 1 is just 1. 
So this meant 13i times 1 minus 2. Take out your negative as an imaginary number and then do the square root of 81, which is 9. This means 2 times the square root of negative 81. So 2 times i times 9. Now I'm going to write everything in the right order. 13 numbers to numbers, letters to letters. 13 times 1 is 13. And then I still have my i. 2 times 9, so this is 2 times i times 9. 2 times 9, 18, and then I still have my i. You can combine i's to i's. You cannot combine imaginary numbers to real numbers, but you can combine i's to i's. So 13i, this is treated just like a variable, but it's an imaginary number. So 13i minus 18i would be negative 5i. And it's okay if you have a negative imaginary number, okay? That was 7a10. Let's look at 7b10. Okay, these are not the same kind. We can't combine them, but we can pull out our imaginary number. Okay, so you pull out the negative under the radical as an i, imaginary number, and then I cannot simplify square root of 2 anymore. Okay, so I'll leave it just like that. 2, pull out my negative under the radical as an imaginary number, and then I have square root of 50. I can simplify that. So keep simplifying. So this is 2i. This can be broken down to square root of 25 times square root of 2. So I have 4i square root of 2 plus 2i square root of 25 is just 5. This is all multiplied. Okay, now my second term, I can multiply my whole numbers together. 2 times 5, 10i square root of 2. Now I'll look to see are they the same kind. They're both imaginary, so that's good, and they both have the same radical. So they are the same kind, i square root of 2, i square root of 2. So I have 4 of these plus 10 of these, which means I have 14 of these, and that doesn't change. So that would be your final answer. Numbers, letters, then radicals. Okay, let's look at 7c6. Here, this number is imaginary, this one is not. This is a real number. So here, negative under the radical implies imaginary, so I can pull it out as an i, and then the square root of 9 is 3. So that would be 3i plus square root of 100 is 10. I cannot add i's to whole numbers. I cannot add imaginary numbers to real numbers. When you have an imaginary number and a real number, this is called a complex number. Normally it is written with your real number first and then your imaginary number. You cannot add real numbers to imaginary numbers and so you leave it just like this. Okay, now we are multiplying um, imaginary numbers and radicals. So if you look at 7c10, you have 4 square root of negative 196 times 3 square root of 49. Do not multiply a negative under a radical to another radical without taking out the imaginary number. Okay? You need to take out the negative under the radical first before doing anything else. So this is a 4. This implies imaginary number, so I'm going to pull it out as an i. And then square root of 196 is 14. So and then this is... 3 times square root of 49 is 7. So everything is being multiplied. 4 times this times this times this. So the same is true here. 4 times this times this times this times this. Okay? So 4 times 14 is 56i and then 3 times 7 21. So don't forget your i. This just means 56 times i times 21. So now I'm going to do my 56 times 21, which is 1176. And then don't forget your i. And then that would be your final answer. All right, look at 7d10. Again, before you do any kind of multiplication, you need to pull out the negative under the radical as an imaginary number. All right, so this would be 7 
Pull this out as an imaginary number. Square root of 64 is 8. This is everything is multiplied. Times 2, and then this is square root of negative 81. Pull your negative out as an imaginary number. Square root of 81 is 9. Okay? So this is 7 times i times 8 times 2 times i times 9. So I'm just going to do my numbers to numbers. So that's 56i times 2 times 9 is 18i. Numbers to numbers. So 56 times 18 is 1008i times i is i squared. We can continue to simplify because by definition we said earlier that i squared equals negative 1. Where we got that is because originally we started with, we said by definition the square root of negative 1 is i. The square root of negative 1 is an imaginary number. If I squared both sides, I would get i squared here. The radical and the exponent cancel to just leave negative 1. So by definition, i squared equals negative 1, so I can replace negative 1 right here. So replace i squared with negative 1, and this just becomes negative 1 times this, which is negative 1008. Look at problem 7b15. i to the 7th. This is where we will use, by definition, i squared equals negative 1. So if I can break this up into a bunch of i squares. That would be i squared times i squared times i squared. Right now, I'm adding my exponents to 4, 6. That would be i to the 6, so I need one more i. Okay? Since I'm multiplying, if you add these exponents, 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6, plus 1 more is 7. That's the same thing as i to the 7th. Each one of these i squares I can replace with negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 1 times i. These are all multiplied. A negative 1 times a negative 1 is a positive 1. I'm going to write this out each step so you can see. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1, and then I just carry down these other things. Now, a positive 1 times a negative 1 is a negative 1, and then leave my i. So essentially, this answer is negative i. Okay, now go down to 7e9. You have i times i times i times 3i. What coefficients in front of each one of these? A 1. So since I know that i squared equals negative 1, I want to put these in, break them up into i squares. So i times i, i squared, i times 3i, 3i squared. Now I'm going to replace my i squares with negative 1. This would be 3 times negative 1. So essentially what I have is negative 1 times 3 times negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1, and positive 1 times 3 is just 3. Everything was multiplied at this point. Negative 1 times 3 times negative 1. Okay, you can go in this order. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, and negative 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3.